Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're out here in sunny Southern California taking a look at the all-new for 2014 Ram ProMaster van. Now this is Chrysler's first entry back into the commercial van segment since the Ram van left a while ago. The Ram ProMaster is heavily based on the Fiat Ducato van, but think of the Ram ProMaster as the next generation of Fiat Ducato with engineering by Ram, rather than just a Ducato with a Ram badge on the front because Chrysler went back to the drawing board and significantly revised the platform of the Ducato in order to create this ProMaster. We have new drivetrain options, new suspension tuning, new brake tuning, new interior options, and most importantly, a gasoline engine for the American market. If you want to know what the diesel engine will be like in the ProMaster in December of 2013 or January of 2014, then go ahead and click on over to that link down below of our video review on the Fiat Ducato because that engine is not available at the launch of the ProMaster and it's not available at this event that we're attending right now. The Ram ProMaster looks very unlike other commercial vehicles on the market. We have a very short hood and that's because the ProMaster is a front wheel drive vehicle so you don't need a whole lot of hood in order to access that engine. Being front wheel drive, the engine is under the hood, not under the dashboard like you'd find in a current generation Ford or General Motors van. This has been target designed for the commercial vehicle market rather than the passenger car market. And there are a few compromises. While I don't find the nose quite that attractive, there's some very practical reasons for this large plastic nose. Regardless of how you have your van painted, these three bumper parts are the same in every ProMaster. And that means if you get into an accident, you can replace these pieces independently of one another. So if you just scuffed up this side right here, you can just replace this one large panel right there all by itself. If you've uh, hit, hit a pole in a parking lot, for instance, then you can just replace this center section. If you've just smashed your grill in, you can replace that separately as well. And of course, this right side over here can also be replaced independently of the other sides. That makes it a lot less expensive to repair your ProMaster if you've been in an accident, or more importantly, if you're a commercial owner and your employees have been in an accident. This design also keeps the headlamps up high where they're less likely to get damaged in an accident. The ProMaster is a dedicated cargo carrying vehicle and it was designed with that in mind. We have very vertical and tall rear doors, very vertical sides which help in cargo carrying efficiency. These doors are the full height in our high roof version. That is an important thing to keep in mind because if you go for a high roof conversion of a General Motors or a Ford van, then oftentimes they don't extend the doors. Speaking of those doors, these do fold almost completely flat with the side of the van allowing you to park on a hill where the van will retain them slightly. It doesn't have a magnetic latch like you'd find in certain other vans, but it will hold them against a hill like that. Once they're open, you'll notice that this load floor is several inches lower than the closest competition for American vans. That makes loading an awful lot easier. That's again thanks to that front wheel drive design. One thing that's not related to the front wheel drive design, however, but is just a good design point, is this rear bumper. It's very short. It's only about five inches deep right here, and it's just about level with the side of the van. That means when you're putting a forklift um, up to the van to try and load a pallet of anything in the vehicle, you can get that pallet further in the van because this bumper is a little bit shallow. We do have parking sensors available in American Market ProMasters as well. This is the short wheelbase, short body, short roof version. So you can see the roof is still somewhat tall. It's just a hair taller than a standard American cargo van, but that floor is lower than a standard American cargo van, meaning you get a decent amount more interior room. It's also, to my eyes, just a little bit more square than that high roof version. You can tell that Chrysler and Ram are really pushing the high roof version because the 1500 is the only series of the ProMaster that's available in this low roof configuration. All models of ProMaster come standard with this 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar engine. This is the same engine that you find under the hood of the Ram 1500 pickup trucks, as well as Chrysler minivans and a number of other Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram products. This produces 280 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. That power is sent to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission that is very closely related to what you'll find in Chrysler's minivan products. It has been altered for the ProMaster duty. Most notably, it has a much lower gear ratio thanks to a lower final drive ratio. You can also get a three-liter four-cylinder diesel that is a Fiat commercial engine for America, and that is mated to a six-speed robotic manual transmission that produces 180 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque which is fairly stout for an engine of that size. This should not be confused with the 3 liter V6 diesel that's used in the Ram 1500 or the Grand Cherokee products. A word about that robotic manual transmission. 
If you're worried about dealing with a clutch pedal or a six-speed shifter, that's not what happens here. This transmission has drive, park, neutral, and reverse, just like you're uh, used to in most transmissions. But the computer is doing the shifting for you. So underneath the skin, this is actually a manual transmission with a clutch plate rather than a torque converter. That means higher efficiency, but a few trade-offs in terms of drivability. So that is something to keep in mind, but we'll go over that later. Let's take a look under the hood to see how easy this engine looks to maintain because that is an important component in any commercial vehicle. So you can see that's the firewall back there. So it is fairly close to the hood opening, meaning that this engine really is under the hood rather than under the body of the vehicle. That makes it a little bit easier to maintain in certain ways, but by all appearances, just a little bit harder in others. It looks like the spark plugs are fairly difficult to get to. They take a little bit more effort than you'd find in some commercial vehicles. That's the oil filter right back there. Very easy to get on the top, although you may dribble some oil everywhere. You have the oil filler right here and the engine oil dipstick right there as well. Taking a look at the right side of the engine bay, you can see the top of the transmission housing right there next to the engine. There's a decent amount of room in the engine compartment for a van like this. There's no transmission fluid dipstick. You do have to check it with the fill and drain holes. All ProMasters come standard with a passenger side sliding door. A driver side sliding door is available, and you can also get both of those doors with glass. The doors lock in position so that you don't slice your head off if you're parking on a hill. And once you open them, you'll notice a few things. First off, this load floor is only 21 inches off the ground, so it's a lot easier to put large items into the van as well as step up into the van. This door opening is also very wide, so you can fit a standard American-sized pallet in the side door and in the driver's side sliding door as well. This means that it's a lot easier to load two pallets in the ProMaster than in something like a Chevy Express van because you can very easily fit one large pallet in right here and then another one in the back. Also, this door is quite tall, so if your pallet has tall items on it, you can get, you know, almost six foot tall pallets into the side of the van. The rear door opens just a hair taller, but not much. It's notably taller than some of the other vans, especially high top van conversions where they don't get as tall. Once you're inside and we're in the high roof version, then you'll notice the ceiling is about six feet four off the load floor, very easy to stand up in. If you get the low roof van, you can see where that low roof would end. It's right about here in the van. So you could still stand up a little bit more straight than you would be able to in a standard American van, although you'd still have to hunch over. There are three different load floors you can get in the ProMaster van. You can get the standard base steel floor, which is suitable for most owners, or you can get a laminate floor, or you can get a soft touch rubberized floor if you're going to be standing in your ProMaster quite frequently. You can also get the ProMaster in a chassis cab variety and you can see that the platform was designed for that right away because the chassis cab would end pretty much right here, right behind this driver's seat, right in line with this floor bump up. This is what I mean about the load floor and the driver's area, passenger area of the vehicle. This passenger area is a little bit higher because everything that is the Ram ProMaster is under there. So the fuel tank is under there, the fuel sending unit is under there, the battery is under there, etc. There's really nothing under the load floor of the ProMaster and that's what helps get that load floor so close to the ground. And also it helps make that chassis cab possible without many structural modifications right from the factory. One nice touch that I'll point out, and this may sound a little bit peculiar, but if you've done any maintenance on fleet GM vehicles then you'll know what I'm talking about. The fuel sending unit and the fuel pump are a frequent failure point in that particular vehicle. So if you're looking for ease of replacement in the ProMaster, it's quite easy. It's right under this little hatch right here. So you don't have to drop the tank, you don't have to drain the tank. Just pop that hatch open, replace the fuel sending unit, pop the hatch back on, and perhaps deal with a little bit of spilled fuel on the inside. But for fleet customers, that's an awful lot easier and faster than dropping the tank. The ProMaster's dashboard is based heavily off the Ducato, and there are a decent number of shared parts. That's a good thing for commercial customers because it means that the interior parts are likely to be cheaper since it's not unique. Over here we have a different shifter because for the American market gasoline engine we do get a standard automatic transmission. So this is just a regular automatic transmission shifter. Up here we have a Chrysler Uconnect 5 inch system that's been adapted to fit in the Fiat dashboard. We have AM and FM and satellite radio, iPod and USB interface, navigation, Bluetooth phone interface, etc. Below that we have a Chrysler standard climate control system. This is borrowed out of uh, several regular Chrysler products and it is easier to use and more attractive than the one that's standard in the Fiat Ducato. Below that we have a button bank which includes our power door lock button, uh, stability control off and our hazard lights. Over here we have a 12 volt power outlet and Chrysler has replaced one of the outlets with a standard USB charger. This is the only cup holder that's available in the European market Ducato and it's really quite small. So for the American market Chrysler has put three large cup holders lower in the dashboard. They are large and easy to use. 
Over here is where Chrysler places the USB input and the auxiliary input for the radio. So this USB port just charges your phone, where this one over here integrates with the Uconnect system. Chrysler's also added some extra buttons to the steering wheel for voice command, phone interface, volume up and down, and mute. Because of American crash regulations, we have an airbag in the dashboard standard, meaning our storage cubbies up front are a little bit reduced. We have one small cubby right under here, and we have a very small glove box lower in the dashboard. The Promaster also gets more attractive front seats than the Ducato. We get regular fabric covered headrests rather than hard plastic headrests as in the Ducato. You can adjust these front seat armrests with this little knob for height, and the seat is adjustable for height, tilting forward, backward, via a series of somewhat unusual levers on the side of the seat. The seat is fully adjustable. Um, as you can see, you can put it in quite a different number of angles, but it is a manual adjustment mechanism. It also slides forward and backward in its track. One little oddity is that the telescoping steering wheel in the Ducato and the Promaster is just a telescoping wheel. It doesn't tilt up and down, it just goes in and out on its track. A very unique option for the Promaster is a third seat option for 2014. Instead of this single passenger seat that's right here, you'd get a double seat module. It extends almost over to the driver's seat, so it's not a three-person bench seat. The driver still gets their own independent seat, and instead there's a double seat positioned right next to it. It's quite unique because there aren't very many cargo vans available in the world even, and none that I can think of in the American market other than the Promaster that offer three across seating up front. Pricing for the Promaster starts just over $26,000 and that diesel engine will cost you an extra $4,000 MSRP. Keep in mind that those are MSRP numbers and commercial buyers will get additional discounts especially if they purchase in volume, so be sure and check with Chrysler or your dealer before you try comparing this pricing directly to what you're getting right now with General Motors or Ford, because there are still those same volume discounts from Chrysler, we're told. We don't have exact numbers on those, but we may have another video for you when Chrysler comes out with specifically what their fleet discount program is. The first thing you'll notice about the Promaster out on the road, especially when it's empty, is how peppy it is. And that's thanks to that 280 horsepower Pentastar V6. The V6 is a lot faster empty than that diesel engine. The diesel engine does offer a decent amount more torque and it's a lot better at the low range. It also gets better fuel economy. But I suspect that for most drivers, the V6 gasoline engine will be sufficient. It's also about $4,000 cheaper, so that is something to keep in mind. Chrysler's not kidding when they say they've modified the transmission for Promaster duty versus the minivan transmission, which is many of the same internals. They've added much heavier duty cooling. They've also lowered the final drive ratio, which means that this feels an awful lot quicker off the line than any other Chrysler vehicle with this transmission in it. Much lower first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, etc., than those other transmissions because instead of changing actual gear ratios, they just swap the final drive ratio in the transmission, which has the effect of shifting all those gear ratios down a bit for heavier duty, heavier load use. In terms of handling, the Promaster comes up just a little bit short of its American competition, and that's thanks to narrower rubber than its competition. It feels very confident out on the road thanks to its front wheel drive platform. It's fairly well tuned, but when it comes to actual handling abilities, it really does pale in terms of the Chevy Express and the Ford E-Series vans, but that's primarily due to the narrower rubber. The odd thing is it doesn't roll as much or dive as much as those other trucks because uh, the vehicle's lower to the ground. It has a much lower center of gravity, also has slightly stiffer springs and just a, a very different suspension setup. So you don't get the same sort of leaning in corners that you do in those other full-size vans. On the whole, it feels like a very confident, um, you know, more mainstream mid-size sedan with a really big back end on it. That mid-size sedan comparison also comes into effect when you take a look at the turning radius on the Promaster. It's 12 feet smaller than a GM uh, Express van of a similar size. That is a significant difference. That's the difference from uh, being able to make a U-turn on a four-lane road or a six-lane road being required in order to make a U-turn. So this thing, if you're in the left lane on a standard-sized American road, you can U-turn into the second far right lane in a two lane road on, you know, two lanes on the other side coming at you. Can't do that in a Chevy Express van. That kind of intersection would require a three or four point turn. Really makes the Promaster much more maneuverable in parking lot maneuvers as well. Just be careful that you don't get too overconfident. I have seen someone in a Promaster van um, get just a little bit too overconfident and hit a bush. Uh, something that uh, I don't think they would have done if they thought they were piloting a, you know, a massive vehicle. Um, you know, that's a good thing, however, in my book, because the Promaster does tend to drive like a smaller vehicle, 
It's just something you need to watch out for because you may get a little bit overconfident as a result. Chrysler has programmed the brakes and the accelerator pedal just a little bit unusually. If your van is unloaded or very lightly loaded, then you may find the brakes to be just a little bit grabby. When we had 3,000 pounds in the back of the ProMaster, it felt a lot more normal than it did when it's empty. Similarly, the accelerator pedal's logic is just a little bit hyper. I mean, you touch the accelerator pedal a little bit and you get an awful lot of acceleration at the initial tip-in. But again, that's something that's more muted the more weight you put in the back. As I suspect that a lot of people will be running around with at least a thousand pounds or so in their van, it's probably a lot less of a problem. The average van user is not like the average truck user, where the average pickup truck user really runs around a lot with an empty bed. The average commercial van user tends to be uh, much more like a generic commercial user in which the van is more completely loaded all the time, so it will result in a slightly different feel. Chrysler is telling us that the ProMaster will be the most fuel efficient van in its class. They haven't really defined that class. That is an important thing to keep in mind. So they haven't said whether they're just comparing this to other 2500, 3500 series vans or whether they're only comparing this to the competition's V6 vans. That's an important distinction because John Motors V6 van doesn't get fuel economy that's all that great. Probably the sweet spot in the GM van lineup is the 4.8 liter V8 with the six speed automatic transmission gets relatively decent fuel economy and has fairly good payload capacity numbers. On the flip side, when you take a look at this Ram ProMaster van, this V6 engine has very similar power numbers to that General Motors 4.8 uh, liter V8. Uh, that's a very good thing for Chrysler. About 260 pound-feet of torque is not too far off that 4.8 liter V8. It is lower, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but the gearing is just a little bit lower in this van to help compensate for that. Power is just about the same, but fuel economy is better in this ProMaster than the V8 van. We've been averaging about 17 miles per gallon in very mixed driving in the ProMaster, decent amount of uh, 55 mile an hour country roads, so keep that in mind. We haven't had the ProMaster fully loaded the whole time, although we have had some weight in it over our time with the ProMaster. Chrysler expects to release some general numbers for fuel economy in the ProMaster. They won't go into huge specifics and they're not required to EPA test the ProMaster because of this vehicle's weight. So that's also important to keep in mind when you're taking a look at vans. Overall, the V6 van in terms of performance out on the road as well as under load is very comparable in the ProMaster versus the competition. There's really very little that this ProMaster gives up for being front wheel drive and having a V6 only engine. I would definitely recommend this to you if you're taking a look at full-size vans you don't need to tow and you're looking for fuel economy. That lack of towing ability is important to keep in mind because Chrysler has said that the ProMaster will only tow, you know, a little under 5,000 pounds or so depending on how you have it equipped. If you need to tow a lot, then you're going to need to look at a full-size American van from General Motors or from Ford because those are designed on pickup truck chassis more or less and they do have towing in mind. Chrysler has equipped all ProMaster vans with Brembo brakes and very large rotors, so I do expect braking fade resistance to be very good in the ProMaster. However, overall braking distance is a problem in the ProMaster versus some of the competition, mostly because of the tires. They're not as wide in the ProMaster as some of the other American competitors, and so that will limit emergency braking maneuvers. Fade resistance, however, appears to be in the ProMaster's favor because of these large diameter rotors. Visibility is important in a commercial vehicle, so let's take a look around with that in mind. We have these large side view mirrors with a dedicated blind spot mirror in the ProMaster. These power uh, side view mirrors are also power folding optionally. If we zoom out, you can see how low to the ground these side windows are. And there's this fixed window up here and this power window portion of the window. Visibility downwards from the side is fairly easy and fairly good. Um, out the front, you have a decent amount of visibility too. The seating position is very high in the ProMaster. As you can see, you can't see the front bumper in the ProMaster, so that is the only real blind spot going on there. We do have a rear glass option in our ProMaster, as you can see back there. Uh, you can get solid rear doors as well. That's something to keep in mind. We do have a backup camera to help out with that. And if we move over to the right side, you can see what our visibility there is like. We don't have the side door glass in our ProMaster that is of optional as well, as well as the uh, rear quarter panel glass that does help improve visibility also. The overall design has grown on me since we first borrowed the Fiat Ducato a few months ago. The American market Ram 1500 still gets these clearance lights up on top of the van. If you can handle a front wheel drive drivetrain in your commercial cargo vehicle, then it's definitely worth giving the ProMaster a try. It has the best fuel economy in the segment. It also has the cheapest diesel option in the segment. And when we had the Fiat Ducato turbo diesel van, we were getting about 28 miles per gallon on the highway, which is significantly better than you can get in anything from General Motors or from Ford. 
We haven't been able to drive an American market diesel ProMaster because they don't exist yet. We expect them in December or in January of 2014, so that is something to keep in mind. If you recall our review of the Ducato, there were a few drivability concerns for American market buyers. I think they're more uh, hang-ups than they are real concerns, however. That is something to keep in mind. Chrysler has remedied some of them. They've added Hill Start Assist to all American market um, models of the ProMaster, meaning you don't roll back on the hill like you would in a Ducato with that robotized manual. That robotized manual is important to keep in mind because it is a manual, it feels like it, it feels like someone is driving you around in a manual. You don't have the clutch pedal or the shifter to worry about, but it still has that feel. You still have the worry of also going up a hill and having the transmission not be able to shift quickly enough to get you from one gear to the other uphill. Just check out our Ducato video for more information about that one. Chrysler has also said that they've remedied that problem by employing faster shifts, better turbocharging, uh, tuning, and some slightly different transmission uh, electronics and engine electronics in the American market ProMaster, allowing that to be just a little bit better on steep slopes in America. Again, we haven't tested that, so be sure that you do before you sign on the dotted line. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been our look at the 2014 Ram ProMaster. Be sure and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos. You can also comment on this video or send us messages right here on YouTube to ask us any questions about current vehicles, and we'll see you next week.